from MTN News, this is Montana This Morning. Controversy swirling this morning over a proposed land swap to keep the Signal Peak mine open. And a West High graduate has died in the line of duty working as a police officer in Arizona. We'll have details about that. And in national news, jury selection begins in Hunter Biden's federal gun trial. We'll have the latest from Delaware. Good morning and welcome to Montana this morning on this Monday, June 3rd. I'm Augusta McDonald. Got meteorologist Miller Robson standing by and we're looking forward to a little bit of a windy day, you're saying? Yeah, uh, the winds will start to increase as we get into the afternoon, especially this evening all the way through Wednesday, moving west to east as we do have this area of low pressure sliding across my, uh, uh, northern parts of Montana. Really, it's going to be southern uh, Canada. This cold front shooting out the back end of that, and that's going to be the catalyst for showers and thunderstorms and the big story going to be those winds as we take a step back in time how do we wrap up uh, the weekend well pretty seasonal with our high and pretty seasonal with our low maybe a little milder than normal top gust yesterday of 30 miles an hour did see some rain uh, just not very measurable just trace amounts in some spots but you can see the yearly total we're already halfway to our annual a total of just over 14 inches, so we're in pretty good shape. Now, the moisture totals there, it says plus 18. Actually, it's minus 18. So we've started the month off on a dry note, but for the year, we're still in pretty good shape with uh, a little bit of rain still to come uh, today through uh, tonight. And it's not going to be a big rainmaker, but we could see some rain. 58 right now at the airport. Uh, humidity at 67%. You can see the dew point temperatures at 47. Winds out of the west at about 6 miles an hour. So pretty calm right now with the winds, but that'll be the big story moving forward as they will increase as we get into this afternoon and this evening and over the next couple of days. You can do, do see we do have some rain off to our north, northeast, with temperatures 40s and 50s and even some 60s this morning. We will talk about the timetable and how strong those winds could get coming up here in a little bit. All right, Miller, thank you so much. Okay. And top story this morning, controversy is swirling over a proposed land swap in the Bull Mountains south of Roundup. That deal, which could ultimately prevent the closure of the Signal Peak mine, comes at the expense of environmental concerns. Among those, allegations that this legislation is an attempt to get around a 2023 federal court hearing to keep the Signal Peak mine afloat are David J. Tist and what's at stake. The Crow Revenue Act to transfer thousands of acres of mineral rights here in the Bull Mountains from the United States to a private trust. The Crow Tribe would also be involved in some of those transactions, and they tell us that the potential bill would help keep the mine open. The Crow Tribe wins as well as the mine stays open. Montana Senator Steve Daines calls this a win-win deal, but the Crow Revenue Act, a land swap centered on mineral rights in the Bull Mountains, is a complicated one, and it already has environmental groups and others. Um, and it's shady. At best. We'll transfer about 4,500 acres of federal mineral rights and, and mineral rights on the Crow Reservation would transfer its mineral rights to the Crow Tribe. It's a con to avoid having to complete the best jobs, highest paying jobs, best benefits. But Hedges argues at what expense? And it's definitely not a good thing for those landowners who live in the area or who live downstream from where the water is going to be harmed. Near Roundup, David J. MTN News. David, thank you. One man is in the hospital and a woman has been arrested after a stabbing on the Billings West End over the weekend. It happened in the parking lot of the that's near the 5400 block of Midland Road. That was about 245 Sunday afternoon. Billings Police Sergeant Benjamin Beck says the man suffered non-life threatening injuries and was transported to a Billings hospital. Officers did find the suspect, 32 year old Delaney LaForge, at a nearby hotel, arresting her and detaining two other men. Sergeant Beck says LaForge has been taken into jail on charges of assault with a weapon and driving under in, under the influence. That investigation is ongoing. We'll continue to keep an eye on that. And uh, here's a cool story for you. The Montana Renaissance Festival wrapped up in Red Lodge yesterday. Here's some footage. That two-day event drew around 13,000 people from across Montana. And once again, the fair featured the finest food and drinks with so many dressed in character. This is the longest running festival in Montana or Wyoming. Uh, people there told us that they really like the uniqueness of this event. Those are, our, those are our dragons, by the way. I have yet to find a knight who will slay them. They keep claiming they're too fierce. The 12th version of the Renaissance Festival, having started in 2012. And uh, new this morning, a former West High graduate has died in the line of duty working as a police officer with the Gila River, Arizona Police Department. Officer Josh Breeze, originally from Billings, was shot and killed while trying to break up a disturbance with several other officers. This happened uh, early in the morning this weekend in the Gila River Indian community. Breeze's father, Dave, was a Yellowstone County deputy, and he also died in the line of duty. He was killed in a crash on November 3rd of 2006. 
Josh had been with the department for less than a year and was still going through field training. Another officer was also shot but survived. The Yellowstone County Sheriff's Office and the Billings Police Department both send their condolences to the family and we send ours as well. We're so sorry to hear of these losses. And jury selection begins today in Wilmington, Delaware, in the federal gun trial against President Joe Biden's son, Hunter Biden. Hunter Biden was indicted on three felony charges related to his purchase of a gun in 2018. CBS's Naomi Ruckham breaks down the case and what we can expect from this courtroom. In a rare moment in American history, the son of a sitting U.S. president will face a jury of his peers in a Delaware courtroom. The federal case against Hunter Biden comes just months before his father, President Joe Biden, runs for re-election. Here you have the son of the city of United America going to trial at the hands of his own Justice Department. Over the weekend, Hunter Biden and his father stayed close, riding their bikes and attending church together. The trial stems from three felony charges related to the younger Biden's unlawful purchase and possession of a revolver during a time when he was addicted to drugs. Experts say much of the case will focus on the definition of the word addict. Whether he believed he was an addict, whether he was in fact addicted when he checked the box on the form saying that he wasn't addicted. Prosecutors are expected to pull from Hunter Biden's own 2021 memoir and call witnesses, including his ex-wife and his brother's widow, Hallie Biden, who Hunter had a romantic relationship with after his brother's death. This trial begins during a bizarre time in American politics, just days after former President Donald Trump was convicted on all 34 counts in a so-called hush money case in New York making the courtroom a central meeting ground for voters on both sides of the aisle. Naomi Ruckham, CBS News. If convicted, Hunter Biden could face up to 25 years in prison. Today, jurors will be asked questions, including about their views on the 2024 election and if someone addicted to drugs should or should not be charged with a crime. Hunter Biden also faces charges in a separate criminal trial in California on failing to pay more than a than million dollars in taxes. Though a plea deal has been in the works to end both of those cases, that deal fell through last July. New CBS polling provides our first look at how voters are reacting to the felony conviction of former President Donald Trump. It shows a majority of Americans surveyed think the jury reached the right verdict and that the former president received a fair trial. In his first sit-down interview following his felony conviction, the former president told Fox and Friends he'd accept house arrest or jail time, but added that he doesn't think that, quote, the public would stand for it. Still ahead on this Monday morning, a sisterhood dedicated to STEM education for women and communities of color. We'll have details on that right after this at 6.09 a.m., 62 degrees out there. You're watching Billings Only Local Morning Newscast.